Good morning and welcome. Time again for another edition of your guide on aviation, aviation business and related issues, Aviator World. I am Ohwevie Ubudaga. Today we shall be examining Aerotropolis, development of airport cities in Nigeria. Dr. John D. Casada, an expert on the subject of Aerotropolis, said, and I quote, Airports will shape business location and urban development in the 21st century as much as highways did in the 20th century, railways in the 19th and seaports in the 18th. This forms the main thrust of our discussion this morning. This morning to tackle this subject is a spokesman of the aviation parastatals, Yakubo Dati. Mr. Dati, you're welcome to the program. Thank you very much and good morning viewers. We will take up our discussions presently. As humanity evolves, new ways of living and modification of man's habitat becomes a necessity. Environment, the most important element of urbanization is the meeting point of cities and their citizens. The aviation industry, being a catalyst for socio-economic development and growth, is beginning to shape economic activities alongside urbanization as can be observed in the developed world with a concept called aerotropolis. Uh, if you look at countries like Dubai, uh, South Africa, you, you can see the role that aviation plays. And indeed everything about aviation and within aviation is commerce. You, you'll be amazed the job that aviation will create the, the um, uh, commerce that it will generate and the, the activity itself. But, but, but beyond that, it's the metropolis we're adding, which gives us the aerotropolis that will manifest in having clusters of, of commercial uh, uh, activities all over the airport city itself. Aerotropolis Nigeria is now being developed to link mixed-use urban infrastructure and industrial layouts to physical airports in Abuja, Lagos, Kano, and Port Harcourt. The Nigerian Aerotropolis is, is a key element of our national transformation plan, and it is our way of ensuring that the airports finally begin to impact significantly on the economic environment in which the airports are. In an effort at making Aerotropolis Nigeria a reality, the Minister of Aviation, Princess Tela Odua, embarked on an investment drive in order to enable increased private sector participation in the proposed aerotropolis. For investors, we have huge and different compartments of opportunities for your appetite. We are here to showcase to you these investment opportunities. We are here to seek for your collaboration. We're here to showcase to you that investing in Nigeria aviation is the best investment you can think of today and in future. The investment drive is yielding the desired result as a number of global players in the aviation industry have showed practical interest. Hence, the ongoing remodeling and reconstruction of airports across Nigeria is to serve as a bridge where urban centers and industrial parks merge with the airports. Air traffic is increasing more and more, and our airports, rather than just being the place where people hop in and out of airplanes, they should be the center of economic development. And that's what the Aerotropolis is about. It's really to build a connection between the rest of the world, between major cities for cargo and for passengers, and for towns and cities to develop around it. Several other efforts of the Jonathan administration in the aviation sector in Nigeria such as the development of perishable cargo terminals, bilateral air service agreements, and the signing of memoranda of understanding as it concerned the building of new airports in Abuja, Lagos, Kano, and Enugu are geared towards ensuring aviation in Nigeria is a revenue earner for government. Welcome back. Now, Mr. Dati, airport cities or city airports. What is the distinction? Well, I uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak. Uh, airport cities or city airports. We are trying to, to, to turn the cities into city airports. 
Uh, in other words, uh, in the past, airports are usually uh, constructed out of the cities. People come in and drive in. But we are moving into a situation where you create a city around the airports. So you now have what you call the airport cities. Uh, the world is fast changing. People have uh, more demand on their time. And uh, most times people calculate the reasons why they go to certain places vis-a-vis -vis the time they need to spend. For instance, uh, what we have in Nigeria, for instance, you, you travel to Lagos, most businesses operate around the island. So you probably take a one-hour flight from uh, Lagos, from Abuja to Lagos. Then you three take hours. three hours to get to the island. And you do your businesses and conferences. You take another three hours to take a one-hour flight. But the situation where you have the facilities you need, you have the conference center, you have the hotel, you have places where you need to do your businesses, you find that you just take one hour, probably you drive two, three minutes, conduct whatever business or conference that has brought you, the next minute you are out. And because of the pressure of time over fast-paced businesses, the, the, the situation where people have a one-stop uh, one solution to business activity is gradually becoming attractive globally. And in the future, we are going to see more of a situation where uh, high-flying business people will be attracted to areas where they can spend less time to achieve more. Okay. And that is where the advantage of the aerotropolis comes in. That's yeah. airport cities. Okay. Yeah. Um, key to the aerotropolis concept is, uh, well, are urban planning and sustainability. Now, who should lead the planning and development efforts of Nigeria's aerotropolis? Well, uh, it should be private sector driven because it's a private sector activity. But government has a responsibility to create the enabling ground and uh, to create the facility for the private sector to flourish. And uh, that is why we're happy that uh, the president, President Goodluck Jonathan, has uh, approved, uh, has supported uh, what we are doing in the aviation sector to be able to designate areas as airport cities so that we'll be able to develop at par. And what we are doing in, in terms of our aerotropolis is moving into the future. We are trying to place Nigeria into the future because most countries that have tried that are people that are planning ahead of time because uh, the world is gradually, daily becoming a global village. And uh, what you need to do is uh, are things that will be attractive to the businessman in Europe, in America, in London. But uh, permit me to uh, say at this point that uh, it may not be proper to be discussing aviation without celebrating the fact that uh, uh, because of the kind of foresight and the leadership we have in aviation, uh, today we are in the moment of celebration, celebrating the presidency of ICAO. We okay. have a Nigerian, uh, Dr. Aliu Bernard, we were uh, who has been elected as the first president of the International Civil Aviation Authority, ICAO. Uh, he is the first black man to assume the leadership of this world body, which is made up of about 172 countries, uh, America, Europe inclusive. And uh, to us in Nigeria, this is very, very significant because it also shows that the intervention and the aviation master plan as developed by Princess Stella Odua, is not only receiving world attention, but world acclamation. Okay. Uh, so we are very, very happy about that. And I'm sure the Aerotropolis project, too, is one in a whole lot of in that is contained in the aviation master plan, which is aimed at putting Nigeria on the global map of aviation. Okay. Um, now, still on urban planning and sustainability, mm. Isn't that a government function? Yeah, it is. Government, will, like I said, will provide the infrastructure. For instance, the land must be made available. It must be designated such that you don't have problems of uh, encroachment like we do have in certain But airports. what do you do in areas where already you have people occupying the land? 
Well, uh, in the first place, there are land that is uh, designated for airport, what you call airport, belonging to the airport and for us, the Federal Airports Authority. And what we are doing now, especially in highly dense uh, populated areas of Lag like Lagos, is to reclaim those land back and uh, reserve them for the purpose for which they have been designated. Uh, well, the importance of this is that uh, in the very few years to come, uh, most businesses, most businessmen will take decisions based on where they will be able to have certain facilities together. Uh, people can afford to travel for one hour today and travel three hours by road to conduct their business. In another 20, 30 years, the options will be where they will just drop and have everything available. Okay. You know. Now, what, um, I know that you've answered this in part in the last question, but what machinery has been put in place now to actualize in this, this uh, project, this vision of Aerotropolis for Nigeria? Well, already in the, uh, the Federal Airport Authority, we've already started uh, at the Lagos area. Uh, we are demarcated a particular section of land, just not uh, be within the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, where we hope to build, not by the tarmac, of course, uh, a bit far from the tarmac, where we'll build a um, uh, five-star hotel that will create accommodation for travelers, and uh, also a multi-story car park. Uh, we also have allocated areas where you, for development of similar uh, businesses such that as you arrive at the airport, the problem of having to drive into the city before you can get a hotel will be taken care of. Okay, but I, I know that, certain sorry to interrupt there. you. Yeah. Now, I know that um, for the Aerotropolis concept, the city, the airport city concept, you expect that... Um, you should have a radius of about 15 to 20 kilometers accessible from the airport, where you have the various businesses and investment opportunities you intend to create. How is that possible in Lagos, given the, the, the situation there? Well, it is very possible because... Are you going to knock off houses, uh, businesses and all that? No, there's a lot of land in Lagos. Uh, you, you recall Around the Lagos airport? There is a, lo a lot around the Lagos airport. Some of it has been given out as concessions, if you permit me, questionable concessions, okay. which is uh, what we have reviewed and we're trying to review to create uh, the enabler. Because all the land there is demarcated and most of the development you've seen taking place is uh, probably for a short term or being given out. So we are reclaiming those lands so that we will be able to appropriate them for what they are meant to because the advantages this brings far outweighs whatever is being used for at the moment because we are looking at a situation where we'll put Nigerian aviation on the global map. We are looking at a situation where the Lagos Murtala Mohammed International Airport will become a regional hub. And if it becomes a regional hub, you need a lot of room for expansion because you are talking about running the place 24 hours, so there will be a lot of services. I mean, you won't go to bed. That's what it means. And we're talking of uh, Nigeria where we have about uh, 40, million, uh, 40 million passenger per year, which is huge. It's, it's one of the highest in Africa. And uh, we have a population that loves to travel. So all these are advantages that are awaiting the aviation sector to rip from. And that is what gives gave rise to the aviation master plan. And as we develop the airports, as we develop the airports across the country right now, uh, out of the 22 airports that are being remodeled, more than half are ready. If you fly to Benin or Enugu, Yola, Sukutu, Potakot, okay. you will see work that is almost completed. Okay. Let, and let's all that let, is let's to, uh, key to key in into, into it. it. Okay. Yes. Let's take a, another tack. The Aerotropolis project is expected to be made up of um, district development, beginning with over 200 infrastructure development uh, in uh, 2013. Now, I have a two-prong question. What are some of these infrastructural developments? I'll come up with the second part when you answer this. Well, some of the developments have to do with the critical infrastructure. For instance, we are talking about uh, there's a business infrastructure, hotels, conference centers, we're talking of uh, industries where you have packaging industry. And to tell you, uh, 
Nigeria where is already repositioned to key into the uh, perishable market. Uh, just about uh, statistics available to us showed that uh, about $245 million was expended on the air freighting of perishable products in the year 2010 uh, from Africa alone. And uh, you are talking about products like flowers, vegetables, and other perishables. Okay. The participation of Nigeria was nil. Wow. You know, and so, and most times, this, uh, this uh, cargo planes come into Nigeria, drop things, and go back empty. Meanwhile, we have the facilities in terms of farm produce. If you go to your market, for instance, during the harvest period, you can't even be, you won't be able to pick what people are ready to give you. Because most of it goes out as the, the, the market I, gets cluttered. So we are creating a market, okay. you know, such that uh, we'll develop the cargo uh, infrastructure so that the young farmer in, in, uh, in the east, for instance, or the granite seller or the tomato seller in Kano mm -hmm. or, the yam or the orange seller in Benue can simply move his product to the Makodi airport and fly them out of the country. Uh, well. And so be, be <laughs> for that, you need infrastructure for packaging, okay. for instance, for refrigeration. And apart from that, we also need other infrastructure like uh, low housing units for people that will live around the vicinity. You need hospitals, you need schools, supermarkets. So it's actually the infrastructure you need for a city to be able to hold that uh, airport city okay. together such that if you come into the airport city, you don't need to go into the main city unless you have to, that okay. everything will be readily available. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, was, I was going to say actually that uh, we would have to, as a nation, change our collective mindset from an importing nation to an exporting nation. That's right. But that's an aside. Back to the issue that we have on hand now. No. This is November 2013. What is the scorecard so far in terms of your infrastructural development towards achieving this uh, vision? Well, right now we have uh, demarcated, we are working on a lot of uh, other, because it's not something that can just be handled independently. How many? Would you, we if you were to, to score yourself, would you say 20%, 50%, 30%? What, what, what would, how far have you come? so far. This is 2013. Yeah. You had 200 projects in mind, 200 infrastructure development projects in mind for 2013. How many of them have you achieved so far? Well, I would say we've achieved about 80% because you look at the tax you need to achieve to be able to demarcate and have access okay. to this land. It's like 90% of the work. The building and the erecting of the infrastructure is probably just 10% of the work that needs to be done. So y you look at it in terms of, number one, even selling the idea. Because as I speak with you, there may be a lot of people that are saying, is this possible? Can it work in Nigeria? And what we are saying is it can work. Uh, we don't have to wait for other things to happen in other countries before we emulate. We should be pay setters. It has happened in other countries. And that is what we are trying to replicate here. And uh, right now, we are going through the process of ensuring that uh, the particular areas of land that is needed for this infrastructure, the formalities are completed. And these have to do with the uh, various organs of government, the legislature, the executive, the leg you know, the lawyers are coming in to clear out the papers. And I think that area is a, a major part of the Aerotropolis project. And uh, to me, that people will even begin to understand and accept the idea is more than 50%. And that is why we're happy that we're moving. And, and uh, I'm sure by, by next year, by the time people begin to see the physical uh, structures coming up and beginning to see the benefits, there will be, there'll be more buy-in. Uh, but for now, we have more buy-in even from foreign investors who okay. have seen that take place in their own countries. Well, how well has the, the aviation sector performed um, in linking the country's people, goods, and uh, services to the international market? Well, that gives rise to the fact that uh, we need to grow our uh, domestic airlines. A lot of infrastructure is going on. Like I mentioned, the airports that are going on. Uh, we've also graciously, the president has approved, and we have secured facility from uh, Chinese Africa. Bank, where we have uh, four international airports. Right now, 
they're, in the, they're mobilizing to start, to start construction in Lagos, Abuja, Kano, Port Harcourt. And uh, we believe in the next two years, these facilities will be ready. And these are world-class terminals that will be able to not just serve as terminals, but also business activity. Airports are fast changing from terminals where people come in to take their planes and arrive to a period, a place where business activity takes place. And that is what we are creating. And as this construction is going on, as I speak to you, more than 10,000 Nigerians are being employed, some as architects, as engineers, as laborers. And by the time it is completed, the number will quadruple. And uh, quadruple because at the end of the day, you are going to have some of these shops. There will be supermarkets. There will be pharmacies. There will be restaurants. You know, all kinds of businesses will come in because the airport is a captive business. And that also attracts entrepreneurs. And we are trying to make our people understand that you can come and make a living, a decent living out of the airport environment, that it will, it will not only be a wealth creator, but also create to the GDP of the nation if we get it right. And that is why we are turning the airports around the country to uh, a masterpiece. Just last week, some students came in from Ghana on tour of the General Aviation Terminal. In, in, in Lagos, and uh, okay. it was a thing of great joy and satisfaction. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you've mentioned Lagos, Abuja, Port Harcourt, and Kano as where you were planning to have these, the airport cities. Now, functional and uh, spatial evolution are crucial to the transformation of, uh, from city airports to airport cities. And um, now the question is, how have you addressed these especially against the backdrop of the demographics of locations like Lagos, uh, Port Harcourt, Abuja, and Kano, as well as the psychographics? Well, what we're trying to do is look at the situation we have and build around it. There is no two area that is the same in terms of topography. But what you look at is how do you achieve what you want to achieve with what you have. Uh, for instance, in a place like Lagos, you're not thinking of moving the whole Ajao estate, for instance, which is adjacent to the terminal away. But you, you create a situation where you can begin to create those things. Because at the end of the day, you want to create a situation where businesses can flourish. And by the time you, it's, it's just to ignite the business. You find that, uh, and it's private sector driven. So you probably begin to have situations where uh, those uh, people who genuinely have houses close to the airports will begin to convert them to business arena and business activity. Okay. The most important thing is creating a, a situation where the airports become a city. And for it to have a city, we must create the infrastructure so that we don't have it uh, grow without plan, like some of the cities we have mentioned. So yes, we have those challenges, and that is why we are working closely with our architects to see how we can meander around them and still achieve what we want. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my, I imagine, therefore, that you would probably have different models for Lagos, Port Harcourt, um, Abuja, and Kano. Yeah. You do? Yeah, we do, just like we have different investors for those areas. Okay. And uh, because, the, like, if you look at uh, Port Harcourt, for instance, it's a window to the Niger Delta. It is designated wow. as a, uh, designated for EPZ. So whatever businesses you are going to de develop will probably be tailored towards uh, the oil producing areas, their needs, their desires. If you go to Kano, you'll probably be looking at things like agriculture. So you'll probably be looking at businesses that will be curved towards satisfying uh, the needs of those category of people. So we are looking at that. Of course, there are other things that are common that okay. will go around, like well, the provision of hotels, schools, um, Mr. Dati, facilities. I'm sorry to interrupt you again. Yes. Time is not really on our side, but there's a question I must, must ask mm. before we do go off, and that has to do with uh, investment and investors. Why should anyone be interested in investing in this project? Because it's the future. Aviation is the future. Aviation is the future. In the past, just uh, in your introduction, just like you said, uh, there were times where when uh, doing business around the sea was the in thing. Okay. 
So they will okay. come around the ra railway. How will the now. investors and their investments be protected? How do you intend to do that? There are regulations, there are government regulations, there are laws, and we're operating You could tell us a bit of some of, of this, because law. anyone watching at home would need to have an idea that if I'm going to buy into this idea, this concept of Eritropolis, I want to know that I have some kind of backing. I want to know what leeway I have. I want to know what support I have. So well, the beauty of it is that it attracts itself because it's a, it's, it's a profitable venture. If you're building a hotel, for instance, close to an airport, it's already a captive market. People that travel in and travel out will already have to sleep somewhere. If Would you have you a have conference maybe center a there... a blueprint of what kind of design they should have the hotel to fit into or something? Because well, I don't think you, you want a situation where just any kind of structure comes up just because we're trying no. to get in. So is there a blueprint? No, definitely. There's a blueprint. We are working with town planners. We are working with architects. Those are areas of details that uh, if it comes through, we're going to get down to it. But, but basically, what we're trying to do is to get the investors to come in and understand that what is happening in other countries, in other cities that are being grown and the benefits will come to is, is coming to Nigeria and the options is that if you have a packaging industry for instance 50 uh, 100 kilometers away from the airport and for somebody who has his two or three kilometers who is going to get more business okay well I must say that uh, it's time to say our goodbyes on the program mm -hmm. uh, aviator world mm -hmm. so um I want to say thank you, Mr. Dati, for being okay. part of the program. Uh, you are the spokesman for the country's aviation parastatals. Mm. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much, viewers. Well, this is where we will be dropping the curtains on this edition of the program. We have been looking at the development of airport cities in Nigeria. Many thanks to the production team, and I am Ohwivil Budaga wishing you a wonderful weekend. Good morning.